Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is The Lady Designer, and we're here with a new series as promised. I've been talking about it for so, so long, but we're finally here. This is a tropical zoo located in Africa, and this zoo is called Abaya Zoo. And Abaya means one who was born when the garden was overgrown in the Kenyan language. And obviously it's very hard to find good names. Definitely if you're going for a name in the, the language of a certain region or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, it was quite hard, but I think this is definitely something beautiful that we can work with as well. So the one who was born when the garden was overgrown, as in the zoo who was born when the garden was overgrown. So definitely something that we should keep in mind while building the rest of this zoo. As I said, this is a tropical zoo located in Africa. We will obviously be using African animals, but we will also be using animals from other continents that will fit in these temperatures. And the first habitat that we are creating is obviously for the lovely meerkats. And for this habitat, I obviously wanted to play around with the new plaster pieces. They are such a great addition to our game and I really love it that we have a bigger variety of plaster pieces now. Now before we continue, I do have to mention that this is a meerkat paradise according to the habitat size requirements. They only need like 180 to 300 square meters or so. It depends a little bit how many meerkats you have, like the more meerkats you add, the more square meters you are going to need. But this habitat is around 500 to 600 square meters. So this definitely is a lot bigger than they need to. But I really don't mind. The habitat has two areas where the guests can see them really up close. And a big area in the middle where the meerkats can really eat their heart out and enjoy a big area to roam around in just like they would in real life. So we start with the bigger area in the middle. If you have seen the video I made around the Africa Pack announcement trailer, there was also an art piece with a white rhino habitat. That habitat had a similar edge with like wood around it. Uh, now obviously this is not a white rhino habitat. We're definitely going to build one in this zoo, but I just really like the idea of using this in this habitat, but I'm definitely going to use that in more habitats in the future, I'm pretty sure. So we have a fence of plaster pieces with a little railing of the new wood pieces of the pack. And then you have like a planter box right behind this plaster fence. And that will be closed off with these wooden pieces. They're from the Africa base game. So the habitat itself has a different height elevations for the mayor cats to play around in. On the left and on the right side, there are two archways with the aquatic rocks. And this habitat is built with a combination of a lot of desert rocks and the aquatic rocks. If you have the aquatic pack, you can download a small little blueprint of the workshop with the aquatic rock colors having the same colors as the in-game rock color. So the natural color color. Ah, it's so hard to say <laughs> to explain that, but it's super useful. And I think if you just type in foe, which is like the name of the aquatic rocks, uh, you will pretty easily find it in the workshop. If I am able, if I not forget, I will try to link it in the description down below. So you can download it yourself. It's just simple, just some small aquatic rocks with the colors of the natural colors that you have in game. Super duper useful. And it really helped me to find the right colors for these desert rocks that we're using. So on the left side of the habitat, you will find two low glass fences in between the new plaster piece pillars. This is definitely inspired of real life meerkat habitats. You see this very often in zoos. With the glass wall, you make sure that also small kids are still able to see the meerkats and bigger kids and adults are obviously able to use uh, to just see them above the glass fence, of course. I think the glass fences only need to be around 1 meter 20 or so. So that is a, quite a decent low fence. I do really like that. Now, normally real life meerkat habitats are super small, but also packed with a lot of rocks and stuff in the middle. Uh, things we are not really able to do in Planet Zoo because you also need space for the keepers to walk around. So I kept this area pretty plain on the left side to make sure that the keeper is able to walk through this area as well. 
But good thing to mention, we're also of course going to add these animals in City Zoo. Now City Zoo is more of the smaller habitat approach, so I'm definitely going to be up for a challenge there to make actually a little bit maybe too small habitat for the meerkats but to see how small we can get it but this is a new zoo and i really want this zoo to be pretty i want to add a lot of details and stuff in things that i maybe normally did not do i'm gonna try to challenge myself a little bit to uh yeah put in more time again like i did also with ponda zoo and also in City Zoo as well, but City Zoo is obviously just a different style zoo. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I want to focus also more on the surroundings of the areas. I don't know. I'm just going to try and make this a very fun, tropical, African style-ish zoo. But we're not going to stick with like one theme or anything. We're going to do different type of things and just play around with things that we can do because I did notice that you don't really have to make everything in the same style so we're just gonna see how we end up and, and, and see how much fun we're going to have with this zoo. But what I did add on the left side of this habitat is a feeding plate so this area will definitely be a lot of fun for kids and adults to enjoy the meerkats up close while they will be eating although I do have to say we have this uh, termite mound, I think it's called, in the middle of the habitat. And to be completely honest, that seems to be enough already for the amount of meerkats that we have in the zoo. Uh, but right now we are at, I think, 12 meerkats. So I think as soon as you uh, make uh, a bigger pack, then you definitely uh, just need that feeder. So I think I, I'm just going to add a few more in. So we're also going to use that feeder. And uh, well, if we add a few more adults in, we're also obviously going to get a lot more babies very soon. So I think it's going to be completely fine in the end. So on the right side of the habitat will be more of an indoor section. I first had like this round shaped opening in the plaster pieces. Like, like that's the only piece that we have in the plaster pieces that has this round window shape. And we still don't have any other building sets with this round. I, I don't get it. I'm so confused. I, I keep asking it for the frontier like just add these pieces as well for other building styles you know it's just a matter of giving a different texture of it and then upload it to the game it's super easy to do <laughs> so why not do it but i don't know why but yeah i i had this like connected with uh like these habits had climbing frames and stuff and then i realized that the meerkats are just not able to use these wooden pieces that you would use for many other habitats i'm not really sure if you would just use those plank pieces if they can walk over it. But how I use it was like with beams. And I thought like, wow, it's a meerkat. They can just walk over that. I don't see that much of an issue, but they, they just don't use that. So do keep that in mind. If you're going to uh, build a habitat for meerkats, you can't really use any beams or, or whatsoever. At least not that I have tried so far, at least not the beams. So yeah, I had to change this idea after some time, unfortunately. But I was really struggling uh, in the beginning with what kind of trees I wanted to use in this habitat. But in the end, I ended up with a combination of the dragon's blood trees of the new pack and some African trees from the base game. I think they have like this Franklin name in it or something like that, as far as I can remember. But I really had a hard time with it. I was like, oh, I'm going to use maybe some palm trees or anything but I just didn't really feel well and I caught a lot of it because I just did not know what kind of trees to use for it but the new grass pieces of this pack are definitely amazing to use for any habitat it feels like the grass pieces in the Africa pack are like the new small aquatic rocks from the aquatic pack they are just so amazing and normally I would always use like the long grass of the terrain painting in any habitat but for this habitat, I did not use that. These grass pieces are just so amazing. They are really amazing to use for your habitats and to decorate them with. It's such a small thing, but it's 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 making such a big difference. I really love it. And the textures are just really amazing and super beautiful. And the meerkats walk through it, not over it or any weird thing. So that is also definitely a plus of these grass pieces comparing to the um, elephant grass pieces, for example. So on the left side of the habitat where we have the glass fences and the feeding plate will be the keeper's gate. I think in a later stage I will be creating a staff building somewhere at this region behind the meerkat's habitat 
Because I think around that staff building will be more habitats located. So I think that could be a really nice spot to uh, to add some staff buildings in a later stage. So the back side of this habitat will have plaster piece walls with the top being from the new Africa pack as well. These pieces just look so great. I really love it. I did struggle a little bit with the ending point on the left side of the habitat. At first, I thought maybe at some pillars or anything like from the new pack, but it all just didn't look that well uh, with the habitat style I was going for. So in the end, I actually cheated a little bit and covered a quarter up with another dragon's blood tree. I will show that in the end of this video as well, obviously. So the planters that we made in the beginning of this video behind the fence will be filled with some aloe vera plants. I hope I pronounced that right. I think I always say that wrong. <laughs> and cactus, cactuses. I'm not really sure if that is saying to put down multiple cactuses. I think it's cactuses. I'm not really sure. Anyways, you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, just filling that up, especially with the aloe vera, the, the orange color, I, it's just bringing in that little bit of more color in uh, the whole area, and I just really do like that. And it also reminds me of the Malin Zoo habitat we built for the African elephant, was it the Indian elephant? Anyways, one elephant habitat there was in Malin Zoo, and I also used those uh, aloe vera plants a lot, so I do really love that. So since I still found the back side of the habitat with like the plaster walls very plain, I did decide to create this little shelter area for the meerkats to chill for when it rains or uh, getting some shade for the sun, obviously. Like you can really tell as soon as it starts to rain, the meerkats hate it. <laughs> so they right away try to find some, some cover and some shelter, either indoors or under the archway or in that little shelter area in the back of the habitat. So that's super cute to see and they're all just chilling and sitting <laughs> and waiting for the, for the rain to stop. It's really adorable. And then it was time to start working on the indoor section. I wasn't really sure how I wanted it to be more of like an open area for guests to walk in and out or more closed with just one or two doorways. I've been playing around with that for a bit, but in the end I removed some, some doorways to add some windows instead. Uh, and for the interior, I really wanted to use the new path textures because they're really looking great. Uh, but the blue towels felt like a little bit too busy and too bright for my taste in this area. So the black and white one definitely fits a lot better. Not that we're not going to use the blue tiles in the future, of course, but we will, we definitely will. But just for this area, I find it a little bit too much, but I think definitely this is pretty, this is going to be pretty close to the entrance area. So I think we're definitely going to use those blue tiles more in the entrance area itself with some fountains and stuff. I really want to make that more heavily themed. At least that is what I think right now, but my plans can always change, so you never know. <laughs> so further during building, I noticed that the meerkats fit through this little doorway, aka archway from the aquatic pack. So not the big one, but the small one with the little blocks, if that makes any sense. Um, that one is just really great for creating little doorways for your meerkats, but obviously your staff can't use it, so you do have to uh, keep that in mind when you're going to work with this. But I was like, oh my goodness, that is just so amazing because I remember when we got these pieces with the aquatic pack and I remember that I don't think any, at least not an adult penguin, was able to fit through. So it was really just for decorations. But now you have animals that are able to fit through, which is just super amazing. I really love that. So the indoor section for the meerkats will be divided into two different areas. One where they come in and one more closed section behind some rugs. So this is more of like a cave area. This last area will have some more heaters and of course the new habitat cameras. So when a meerkat will be giving birth or something like in real life that is, people at home would be able to see the meerkats in this little area taking care of their little babies. Just the idea is just super lovely. So I really do love that. You will notice in the recordings that I, I did place the rocks a little bit too low first uh, and later on I realized that you were able to uh, cr use these openings for the meerkats to really go through so that's why I started to raise it all and on top of these rocks I will later create some more of like a planter area like this area cannot be reached by the meerkats which is kind of a pity because I really did expect them to be able to maybe climb on some beams or anything like that no, nothing really 
spectacular, like not in a super big angle or anything. But I really thought they would be able to walk over it or something like that. But yeah, it's it's kind of useless space anyways. So yeah, I decided to create some kind of planter area ID with it and decorated it with some more uh, aquatic rocks, more of the aloe vera plants and some cactus thing. No, I did not use a cactus, uh, only the aloe vera plants. And uh, I also used some small little spotlights to light up that area a little bit for the idea at least that is. And later on, I actually was looking for real statues, but you have like statues, aka signs. I think you can call it more of signs for the meerkats, but I did use those to as some kind of statues and they actually work quite well. So that to decorate it a little bit more in like a meerkat feeling or whatever you want to call it. And in the end, I really wanted to add these uh, logs you have as enrichment items for the meerkats. Now, I really do like them, but they have to be completely flat. You can rotate them only around, but you cannot put them in an angle or anything like that, which is kind of a pity. So yeah, I did use them two times in this habitat, I think it was, but it's not like you can do too many, too many things with it. But they do look cute and it's super fun to see meerkats walking through it or anything like that. So that is really a lot of fun, to be honest. So the last thing I did was like there's this corner section in between like the indoor and the outdoor section on the right side it was such an empty area and no tree fit in there or anything. So later on I decided to create windows in that corner so we can have a more of a viewing area from that side as well from people that walk on the back side and look into the habitat. And there also is a window from the indoor section. So there are definitely several different viewing areas into the habitat towards the meerkats. Now I have been using more of the vista points. Now I don't really like how the vista points look. I I don't know. I always try to hide these things whenever I got them in Planet Coaster. Like I rather just hide them and you can basically hide them. You can hide them in inside walls or anything, but you have to be careful like they snap towards your path, so you have to keep that in mind. Uh, but they are very, um, I'm not really sure if they're overpowered, but uh, they do a lot. So by just putting down one, you get a lot of people attracted to it. So I think one is definitely enough if you want to attract people towards a certain area in your zoo. So do keep that in mind. And it, But, but it does really work. It really helps to, to, to attract people to a certain area. So I do really like that. It's definitely going to help a lot with your guest flow in your zoo. So yeah, by hiding them away uh, inside of your walls and stuff, uh, that is definitely a way to go for. But also on my community wall, I did share a, a video of just Goran of how to uh, hide your animal talking points underground. And I think you can also do this with the Vista points. I wasn't able to reproduce it because I you have to put those down before you start building. And I obviously thought of that when I already had everything in place. So I couldn't really add an animal talking point or a Vista point even if I wanted to. So yeah, definitely go and check out my community wall if you're interested in that. Because it's really cool, especially for the, the animal talking points that you can hide them underground and still have the animal talking points to work. So you still have like your educator above the ground doing its animal talk. So that is definitely a very cool thing to, to check out if you uh, want to, uh, if you're an experienced builder and you want to hide those kind of things for, for more realism, especially in this case, uh, like the animal talking point, you can't really hide away in some walls or anything like that. But yeah, definitely the, the Vista points uh, are a little bit easier, but yeah, sometimes you just don't have the option to hide it away. I did hide one away as well at the left side of the habitat with the glass fences inside of the, the, the pillars, the plaster pillars. Uh, so that was quite easy and I had three of them and then I realized how, uh, how much power they actually have. So <laughs> yeah, I had to delete two of them and just had, I just kept one of them to make sure that the gas would still go there. Now we're at the end of this video. So without further talking, let's just jump into the file and let me just show you around. So welcome to Abaya Zoo. This is the first ever small little tour that we are able to do. Well, like it's only one habitat, of course. As you can see, I did do a little bit off camera. I just filled this all in. We have one path right over here, which can be used for wheelchair people. 
And then we have two staircases on both, right over here, I think, and right over there. Uh, so let's just go and use this path first. Uh, well, there's only one path. So obviously this is a four meter wide path. So we don't want it to be super busy. Like obviously this is the first habitat. So all the guests that are in here are using this habitat. So, but as, as soon as your zoo becomes bigger, it's going to be less crowded right over here. But this is definitely on purpose that we have one small path right over here. But this right over here is going to be more of a main path. So it's, it's not going to be that bad. Like, look, now I added a few more meerkats. And now this plate is going to be used, which is really cool. So hopefully we are going to uh, be able to see some meerkats gathering around to eat. And this is exactly how I intended it to be. I want guests to be fully enjoying this habitat. And uh, the meerkats really up close at certain areas, which is just super cool. And I really do like that. Oh, that little one is so cute. Oh, there's another one. It's so adorable. Oh my god, that went so fast. So right over here, just to give you an idea, I hid one of the vista points. So that one is, I think, pointing towards uh, the, the plate itself. Uh, so yeah, sometimes you have guests just waiting here and looking in the habitat while there is not. Are you going to dig for us? Uh, where there, when there is no meerkats, but I find that more realistic. Like in real life, many people will just uh, go and try and find meerkats in the habitat and they will walk around and see if there are here. So I find that more realistic to be completely honest. Uh, so I don't really mind that. So when we move over to here, this is the more bigger area for the meerkats to be able to use. Man, they're all digging so much. I love that. That is great. Are you going to... Oh, no. I thought maybe... I have not really noticed the, um, um, the mating animation. So I, I'm actually not really sure what they do uh, when they get pregnant. So that is the only thing that I'm missing still. So I was thinking that maybe that was just going to happen, but no, I don't think so. Oh, sorry. Uh, but yeah, they have this really nice big area right over here, which I really do like. Uh, it might be a little bit too big for them, but I don't think anyone minds and I don't think the meerkat minds. And uh, I really do like this edge right over here. It may not be uh, super fitting for a meerkat habitat, but I don't care. I like it. I like how this is looking. I do. Uh, just like it that we have this planter in between. That's something I definitely want to do more often in the future with planters and stuff. You definitely see that a lot in real life zoos as well. So we do really like that. So we have a little bit of decorations right over here. Just to make things a little bit more interesting. I actually was thinking to add another vista point here. But I don't really have space for it to hide it away unfortunately. Uh, so that's not really going to happen. But we have... Uh, the educational sign right over here. We have one more bench uh, right over here for the people to just chill, sit down and relax. And we also have some musical speakers. I don't know if you can hear it, but there is some African music playing around here. And then if we go right over here and we go up, we walk around this area. And then we get to this building right over here. Obviously a lot of work to be done. Uh, and then we have this indoor section and uh, I actually moved this uh, one meter to the back or two meters to the back because the benches were a little bit more uh, too much in the way of this path, but they can still be used like this. So that is really nice, uh, definitely a nice area for people to cool down a little bit in this biome and to, and to relax. And uh, right over here. We have two windows so the guests can also look inside the habitat right over here uh, when they're drinking, for example. But this is obviously the main feature of the indoor section. And the guests can look inside of the habitat right over here. And then they have this cave area with some habitat ca uh, ca captains, <laughs> webcams behind. Uh, so yeah, imagine that guests from home could be able to look inside of the cave which is just so super neat and i really just love it that the meerkats are able to uh, use these little archways 
and yeah on top as i said this plant right over here uh with yeah well these are actually signs but they they it doesn't really matter too much i do really like uh how they are here even though i would love to see some statues instead i think this definitely uh, gives uh, gives an idea uh, of a statue even though it's not <laughs> So yeah, still a lot of work to do, as I said, probably going to have uh, some kind of staff area right over here. And we're going to have uh, one or two more habitats around right over here. Might be uh, the, the other African animals. I mean, why not add those first and then continue building in the zoo and um, yeah, use a lot of other African animals. And uh, of course, also some other animals. We're not going to stick with only african animals we're definitely going to use a lot more different ones oh, man it's so much fun to be building a habitat for these meerkats to be honest i really enjoyed doing this i don't know they feel so much alive it feels so good having these little small meerkats in our zoo it's so much fun i i do really hope you guys enjoy them as much as i do i think they're great i think uh yeah i'm just really happy with the meerkats in planet zoo do let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this habitat of course and from the africa pack what is your favorite animal so far and what have you been enjoying the most what are your most favorite pieces i mean the plaster pieces are definitely one of my favorite pieces i think they uh they look great i really love them but yeah, leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed. And subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. And if you want to see more planets... Is there a thing in the tree? How did that come there? <laughs> but yeah, subscribe, of course, if you want to see more Planet Zoo content. I definitely have you covered. And yeah, I just really do hope to see you guys all in the next one. Bye, guys.